Hello and welcome to the 3D printer tips. Today I want to give you some tip about printing perfect and accurate holes. Have you ever wondered why your small holes in your 3D prints often come as undersized? Well, this is a combination of a couple of things, such as thermal expansion, wrong printer settings, low quality or worn out nozzle, over extrusion and probably many others. But let's say you took your time and corrected all the issues you could. You've changed to a new nozzle and you dialed in all the flow test as well as the dimensional accuracy, but holes from 5 to 3 mm are still undersized. What can you do in this case? Common recommendation is to make small hole compensation in the slicer settings. And while it does work to some extent, this doesn't translate well to a different materials. For example, if I set a small hole compensation according to the test prints I do in PLA, they often come as oversized if I print in PETG or ASA. So in order to make sure that all the materials you print are good, you need to make yourself a table of hole compensation for each materials you print. Maybe even for different colors as well. What if I told you that there is an automatic way to fix this issue for everything that you print. And it does good enough job so you don't have to use the drill. It is called polyholes. Before we deep dive into this, let's make ourselves some simple 3D print model with three hole sizes, 3, 4 and 5 mm each. Each of them will have uh, four different clearances with an increment of 0.1 mm. This isn't by any means any special model that I would need to explain, but I will upload it into printables so you can check it on your 3D printer. I will also include a source file in case you want to tweak it. Testing piece will be 3 mm high. I made them spaced by a reasonable amount in case you want to test how the amount of vertical shells affects the hole sizes. It is now time to print it. I will make a 6 total pieces. Two of each printed with white PLA, grey ASA and orange PETG. First one will be printed with the default setting and the second one we will be using polyholes. Currently my Super Slicer profiles are taken from the Andrew Ellis printing guide. I haven't changed much there since I was pretty happy with the results. However, for those test pieces I reduced the shell parameters to 2 and horizontal shells to 3, as they shouldn't affect results much. I have also disabled infill. To turn on polyholes, all we have to do is to tick this checkbox here. As of time of making this video, only the Super Slicer supports polyholes. Whole idea about it was taken from the very old blog post and implemented inside the slicer. If you are interested in theory behind polyholes, I suggest reading that post. I will link it in the description below. This is how sliced model look like without polyholes. And this is how it looks like with polyholes enabled. Unless you very closely inspect it, you shouldn't notice any difference. At least not when printing with 0.2 mm layer height. Now that we have ourselves pieces printed, let's mark the ones printed with polyholes with a marker. Also, let's grab ourselves three drill bits, 3, 4 and 5 mm and see in which hole they fit. As you can see, model with polyholes enabled has the dimensions pretty spot on. And the one on the right with the normal holes needs at least 0.4 mm clearance in order to fit the drill bits. Out of three different materials you can see that SA is pretty consistent. PLA and PETG on the other hand needs much more clearance in order to fit the drill bits. Of course, do not expect that turning polyholes will magically fix your printing issues. There are still some caveats and drawbacks that will need to be talked about. 
First and obvious one is that polyholes only work for vertical holes. Second one is that polyholes needs quite a bit of space around the hole in order to work. Otherwise you may end up with some print artifacts. Third one is that you will actually need to check your slicer results, so you'll need to be aware of what you will be printing. In some cases it is advised to turn off polyholes even at the cost of lower accuracy. If you have a habit of adding a bit clearance when designing your own parts, you'll need to rethink this if you plan on using polyholes. Biggest advantage, however, is when you are downloading other people's models, you don't really have to worry about what clearance the author made. This is actually the main reason why I went on investigating different options when slicing other people's models. I was fed up having to constantly drill holes or adjust small hole compensation whenever I printed something. Drilling holes isn't necessarily something bad, but the thing is, it's not a good solution in my book. First of all, you get plastic chips all over your workbench. Sometimes plastic gums up inside due to heat. Not to mention, it's not hard for your hand to slip and make all the way through hole when there wasn't supposed to be one. And don't get me started on widening holes if the contact surface is a slope. Try that once and fail spectacularly. So I honestly recommend checking it out, especially if you previously used Prusa or Super Slicer. That will be it for today's video. Hope you like it and if you did, hit that subscribe button as it will help me get motivated to do more tip videos in the future.